Hey everybody, Glenn from Third Millennium. Uh, had a lot of questions from some people about uh, repairing other speakers that they have. We don't actually provide that service, but we thought we'd spend a couple minutes show you guys how you can do a speaker repair. And each one's a little bit different depending upon the surrounds and so forth. But the most common type of activity that you run into is if you've got a decent speaker, the surrounds will rot out on them over a series of years and they can in fact be replaced. It's not a, a terribly difficult job, it's a little bit slow so if you've got some patience you can do it for some pretty short money. Now what we thought we would use as an example, this is a JBL driver that's out of one of their Control 1 units and it uses this uh, foam, closed cell foam surround and you can see really what's happening here, and I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit for you uh, so you can get some real detail. Um, it simply is just from humidity and heat over the years, it's just disintegrating. And uh, nice thing is, well, bad thing is, I mean, these sorts of surrounds are inexpensive, and uh, that's why they're used a lot. The uh, bad thing is they don't stand up fairly, uh, or they don't stand up too well, and um, you do end up having to replace them after a number of years. It's one of the reasons why in all, all of our speakers we actually use a butyl rubber surround, which is a lot more robust than this. It's a little more expensive, but it does last a little bit longer. In any case, um, these are certainly repairable, and uh, I wanted to show you how to actually do this. Now, what you need to do... <coughs> is you'll need to completely remove the old surround and it's not too hard as it's falling apart but you also want to remove uh, this gasket out here as well most speakers let me peel off a piece of this um, you can see that there's a, a metal lip on the back that the gasket extends around most of the replacements so let me get the replacement that we have for this one most of these replacements are actually uh, fabricated with that gasket all as one piece. Okay, so uh, when you go to put this into place, you'll need to be adhering it. You're basically going to glue it back into place all the way around and then also to the edge of the cone. And that means this surface has to be cleaned off, uh, you know, really pretty well as well as making sure that the uh, cone itself is also cleaned off. Now on a lot of these the surround is actually glued to the back. Uh, most of the replacements you're gluing to the front. It doesn't really make any difference which way you actually do it. The idea is it keeps the cone from shifting side to side so that its travel is um, straight back and front. So uh, what you need to do is take this and if you if this is still relatively intact you can just use a razor blade and just go around quickly like this and then just start peeling off this uh, old surround material now on most speakers if they're well made it varies from manufacturer to manufacturer most speakers not only would they uh, potentially like this one they're actually attached to the back of the speaker uh, these also have a bead of glue in the front and you'd like to remove all of that and just leave this piece of paper here in the front and very often if you can get a finger under it you can actually peel it right off like I'm doing here All right, we've got all the old glue off the uh, front, which is important. Then, what we want to actually do is, and I'll zoom this a little bit more, we want to get as much of this off of the back as we can. And very often, because this stuff is so decayed already, if you just get a thumb under the edge, just be gentle here, you can usually roll off uh, the little bit of foam that's left uh, leaving a clean 
uh, back. Now, we're not going to glue directly to the back, so you can, uh, you know, not have to worry too much about getting every speck off of the back of the speaker, but you want all of this stuff that you can reasonably get off to get it off. And what I'm going to show you, too, is I'm going to show you a trick for when you're rebuilding these things uh, to actually do something with this replacement surround to improve it so that it will actually last much longer than the originals uh, did. And this is particularly an issue if you're uh, using these where there's high humidity and that includes of course any sorts of cars. So uh, I'm going to clean the rest of this off and uh, I'll pause the camera then we'll jump back and pick it up from there. All right, you can see now I've got this pretty well cleaned off and nice uh, clean edge on the cone here. And uh, now i got to take off the uh, surround gasket area here. Uh, if you have a heat gun, you can heat this and it helps to actually pull it off. Most of you guys probably don't have a heat gun, so I'm just going to show you. Uh, you can just deal with a, a small flat blade screwdriver. Just be careful using this, obviously, so you don't put the screwdriver through your uh, hand. But you're basically just going to work underneath. Most of these glues are a uh, low-strength, uh, heat-sensitive sort of glue. And not too bad to actually get off. This one's coming pretty easily, actually. And we're going to clean this glue residue off of here, but before we do that, we want to get as much of this uh, junk out of the uh, channel here as we can. And again, your flat blade screwdriver uh, works pretty well just as a scraper to get the big pieces off. So, again, I'll pause the camera. I'm going to work this one all the way around and uh, then we'll pick it back up and we'll show you how to clean off the last of the residue. All right, we've got the speakers cleaned up pretty good. Uh, we've chipped off all of the big pieces that uh, we could get at and what that leaves us with is just this glue residue all over the place. The cone is fine. We need to get this stuff off so that our new glue will bond cleanly to the basket and then also, of course, to the surround that we put in. Easiest way we found to do this is uh, just use some lacquer thinner. And it's the reason we got the gloves on. It's just a good idea with this stuff just to uh, keep the gloves on. But lacquer thinner will dissolve the glue residue. And just a question of working uh, in and you'll get the stuff off. Uh, just take you a little while. Uh, you want to get this not 100% perfect, but you want to get it really pretty clean because you don't want to have to do this job again. So uh, go ahead, continue to work it, and you'll see you can actually get it uh, nice and clean with a little bit of effort. I'll pause it once again. Uh, I've got two speakers here. I've got both of these drivers that we're working with for uh, a set of speakers. We'll get these cleaned off, and then we'll come back, and we'll show you how to do a special step to prep the surrounds to get some extra life out of those. Alright, so we got these cleaned off. It turned out pretty nice getting all the uh, glue residue off. And so we got a nice clean surface now uh, for these uh, new ga for the uh, new surrounds to adhere to. So rather than just glue them into place, which you can do uh, and, and you can be done, uh, what I wanted to tell you is there's a way to treat these so that these will last a little bit longer. And if you've got a speaker that's also been damaged, maybe somebody was putting it in and the screwdriver went right through the surround and left a hole in it, you can actually uh, patch that. So what I'm going to suggest you, you do is get some 100% pure silicon caulk, get the clear stuff. You can get a tube of this down at Home Depot for 4 or $5.00 and just a, a cotton swab and the idea is you're just going to very very lightly paint onto the surround the silicon 
Now, what does this actually do? Well, what it does is it closes the cells in the surround and it tends to stand up quite a bit better. And again, you go very light on this. Now, I've had some people I know you're going to say, especially if you know anything about speakers, you're going to say, well, you know, putting the silicon on there is going to change the compliance of the surround slightly. And the answer is yes, that's true, but you're already changing the compliance because the surrounds that you buy in a kit, if you get these off eBay or off a place that specializes in doing these for speakers, they're not going to be the same as the original surrounds in any case. There's going to be a slight difference. And as long as you keep this layer of silicon very thin, it will be a very slight difference. And you can see it goes pretty fast. I mean, there's nothing uh, terribly complicated about this. And you just have to be very, very careful on the back side where you want to glue it that you don't have the silicon uh, in the area that the glue is going to go. I'm just putting it on this large round portion of the uh, surround here. Okay. And just take just another second. I'll have this one done. And then the idea is I'll also repeat this on the back as well get a little protection there. Okay, that one is done. You can see, you almost can't even notice that there's uh, anything on it. Then, right in the channel on the back, um, simply do the same operation. And you only need a tiny little bit of silicone to do, uh, you know, an entire speaker because you're just putting this on super, super thin as a coating. Okay. And there we go. This one's all set. You know, some of the, uh, you know, in the old days when people would try to make cones more compliant, they would actually slit the surrounds that were on them and then go over it with the silicon to create uh, a more flexible surround, a more compliant surround. Uh, so it's kind of an old, uh, it's kind of an old trick, but one of the things that it does do, which is really handy, is it provides protection. So I'm going to hit both of these with that silicon. The only drawback of that is once you put that stuff on, it's 24 hours to let it fully dry. So I'll go ahead, stop the camera, let this thing dry overnight. We'll jump back into this, and then I'll show you the final step, which is actually gluing everything down. All right, so we're back and we've allowed our silicon to dry on the inside and the outside of the new surrounds and what we wanted to just remind you of make sure you don't get it on this part here and on this outer band and this inner band here this is where we're actually going to be gluing to the frame of the speaker so we don't want any of the silicon on that it's quite hard to get adhesives, adhesives that bond well to the uh, silicon. So here we go. We've got our baskets cleaned off nicely all the way around. We went over that, scraped off the old glue, and then hit it with some lacquer thinner to really clean it down. So now we're actually going to apply uh, the glue. This is done in two steps. The first step is we bond to the cone, and then the second step is to bond to the outer ring. And the reason for this is we need to, after we're bonded to the cone, take care of any side-to-side -side, uh, alignment issues that we might have on the speaker. Now, if you're not aware of it, with larger speakers especially, you'll have to usually remove the dust cap in the center. It's just a piece of paper which is glued over the dome that uh, keeps junk out of the gap between the voice coil and the pole piece and magnets. And it's very common that you have to do shimming, where you basically are taking uh, thin pieces of uh, plastic uh, paper, something like that, to keep the voice coil uh, centered really nicely for the uh, magnet and pole piece structure so that it's not scraping and rubbing against the sides. With smaller speakers like this, these little four and a half inch uh, things, uh, it's perfectly possible to simply do that by feel to actually make sure the alignment is okay. So we'll show you how, to, how we do that in the next step. But the first step is we're going to glue 
our new surround to the actual cone. And there are uh, usually the, these are attached one of two ways. They may be attached underneath and behind the cone, or they may be on top of the cone. Usually when you're reconing, it's perfectly okay to adhere to the top of the cone. Now, this cone is actually treated. Uh, this is a treated paper cone, and it's usually treated with a polymer. helps to stiffen the cone. We do this on some of our own, and uh, JBL, uh, when this system was made, uh, they took advantage of that technology as well. The backs of the cone usually are not treated, and so they often glue the, the surrounds up to the cones uh, earlier in the process. So, um, in this case, the glue will adhere properly to this uh, surface, even though it looks a little bit shiny. It's not a problem. The glue that we're using, this is stuff made by a company called Global Adhesives that makes uh, glues specifically for uh, speaker use. This is a product which the part number is uh, NC32, and they make different quantities and so forth, uh, specifically designed to work with these foam surrounds uh, and cones. It'll even, and it bonds very, very well to metal. This is basically a contact cement. And uh, with that, when you buy a reconing kit, usually you'll get one that comes with a small bottle of adhesive. Uh, that is correct for the type of material and the surround that you use. So um, usually you don't have to buy it separately. Just make sure that you check the safety requirements. Contact cement, this stuff is uh, super, super flammable and it's also, if you're going to be breathing this in a confined space, it's pretty toxic. So you want to use this someplace where it's ventilated well and uh, you can safely work with it. So. What we're going to do in this step is we're going to glue just the inside ring into place uh, on the speaker. And we're going to do that by applying the glue to the back side of the surround and then flipping it over and putting it into place. We have a little bit of time to work with it, not a super long time, but a little bit of time. You can wear gloves if you're concerned at all about getting this stuff onto your uh, onto your hands. It's probably not a bad idea. Uh, I'm not going to do it because I've uh, done this quite a few times and uh, I'm able to get this stuff on without really any problem of uh, getting it on my uh, skin. You can use the nozzle to spread this out. You want to completely cover the surface. You do not want it dripping off the surface. Alright, there we go. We got a good coating on it. Get it aligned into place. Set it down. And then we're going to be pressing it onto the cone with our finger. And what you can do is you can support the back of the cone from underneath, reaching in with a finger to make sure that it is pressed solidly into place. Once that's into place, we're going to set this aside. Uh, usually working time is about an hour. Um, we're going to give this a couple hours just to make sure it really, really sets up well. And then we're going to come back and do the last step, which is gluing the outer portion to the basket itself. Okay, we're back. We've given that uh, overnight actually to dry, even though it probably doesn't need that long. So where we are now, we have everything glued into place except for this outer uh, portion. We're going to use our same glue. Uh, again, this particular glue is effective for both the uh, it's effective for both of the uh, metal as well as the uh, foam. So it'll do a good job with this. There are different glues for some of these other. Uh, some of these other things, but this NC, um, uh, well they have 32 ounce and they have smaller containers as well, but this stuff as a contact cement works really well uh, for all of these. So the, pa the uh, plan here is we're just going to simply pull this back, run a bead all the way around, 
and then push it into place. And then before it dries, the thing that we need to do is to make sure that the voice coil is not rubbing against the uh, pole piece or the magnet assembly. There's a very small gap in there. With a bigger speaker, you usually will have to pull out the dust cap, put some shims in place to hold it. A lot of these smaller ones, you don't have to do that. And the way you actually do this is you very gently push the cone uh, down to its normal range of travel. And as long as you don't get any scraping, and you'll be able to both feel it and hear it, as long as you don't get any scraping, uh, you're okay. If you do, you need to then shift the cone as, it, as necessary to move it away from the scraping so that the uh, movement is okay. Again, I can feel on this one it'll be fine. This other one it'll probably be fine. So all we really need to do here is go ahead put our glue into place. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that now. We'll speed this up just to get this finished. All right, the bead of glue is down. Press that into place. All right, we're clean on that. And then the way to actually let this set up, take the speaker, turn it over, and simply allow the weight of the speaker to press down on that gasket and uh, let the glue set up, let it go overnight. So that's it. That's reconing the speaker. I hope this has been helpful to you guys if you have to do this project. It is a great way to uh, salvage sometimes some very high-end speaker systems uh, where the cones have, uh, cone is maybe okay, but the surround is just rotted out. So you can actually pick up you know, a pretty good deal on a, uh, on a nice quality set of speakers. And sometimes this simple process is all you need to actually repair the surround. Again, hope this was helpful to everybody. Thanks very much. Hey, remember to give us a like and subscribe to the page if you're interested in more audio and Miata videos.